Hello, Hello, everybody. Happy Tuesday. As always, we are back for another edition of BitLab Live. Welcome. Welcome, indeed. Though at a special time this week, we are live at 5, 5 p.m. EST. But if you're watching on YouTube after the fact, it won't make too much of a difference. So, um, we have a very cool show for you guys today. Um, uh, first of all, um, why don't we tell you who we are and what we're about? So today's show, as always, is sponsored by Little Bits. Little Bits is a library of electronic modules that snap together with magnets, as so. And you can mix and match different modules to create awesome, excellent electronic projects. Uh, quickly, easily, you don't need to know anything about electronics to do it. Not at all. No degree required. Um, and so our show is mainly focused around an arm of little bits called the BitLab. And the BitLab is the place where anybody in the world and anybody in the community can submit their own idea for a potential little bits module. Um, and with enough votes, we go through a refinement process and we can eventually manufacture and sell a community born idea. All the while the developer gets 10%. So. The most important thing that you guys can do as viewers and as listeners and as watchers is to head on over to our website at littlebits.cc slash bitlab and you can actually control what our roadmap looks like. So we vote. need your guys' votes. More importantly than anything else that we do, please vote. Please. But if you're so inclined, create a module, submit it to the BitLab, and you too can be featured on our show which is Indeed. one of the wonderful things that we get to do. Um, so let me give you a quick rundown of what, sh what today's show is going to be about. Uh, we're, we have a whole slew of hot topics and updates on the, the goings-on here at Little Bits HQ in New York City, uh, as well as actually around the rest of the country. Some very cool things to share. We have some very special guests just off to our side who we'll be introducing very shortly uh, from The Crated. Uh, and so again, if you make a module, you could end up on our show just like these guys. Uh, we will have our weekly trivia, and then we'll wrap things up. Uh, so, first and foremost, let me get into the exciting goings-on. So, as most people on the internet probably know, it has been Cyber Week. Cyber Monday, Black Friday, Cyber Week, all sort of wrapped together in one big, wonderful blanket. Um, and so we are extending all of our Cyber Monday deals through the rest of the week. And so what that means is, is that you can actually get up to 30% off uh, on certain orders, your entire purchase, until midnight Friday EST. Um, it is hugely awesome that we are able to continue doing this. The other thing that we want to plug is we have been on a massive rampage to get into as many Radio Shacks to hold local meetups as possible. And so I actually just held one earlier today I got to hang out at the, the Radio Shack in Madison Square Park, and I'll actually be at one next Tuesday uh, right here near our office. But I want to call out a very important Radio Shack meetup, and that is one happening tomorrow night at 5 p.m. on Market Street in San Francisco. And I call this out because Aya Bader, our CEO and founder, will be there in the flesh, and she will be hosting a meetup all herself. So if you are joining us uh, from San Francisco and you don't have plans tomorrow night, you should go check it out. It is going to be awesome. 5 p.m. Market Street, San Francisco. I wish I could be there. So, we have some other stuff to share with you as well with regard to our website. So, yes, that is true. We have uh, some great smart home kit um, projects uh, that are now live. Uh, so, you can go there, check it out. You can order the smart home kit. Uh, and go ahead and, and see what the new cool thing is that you can make, all kinds of stuff, uh, good ideas, and then go ahead and contribute your own, come up with your own project, uh, solve a problem that you have with little bits. And then in addition to that, we have tips and tricks. So as always, we come out with a new product. We have tips and tricks to show you all the little secrets that we come up with to work with the modules, to get the most out of them, to make the best project possible. So that is up on the website as well. So go check that out. See everything you can do with the new modules. Now, Paul, I have a question for you. Ask away. Now, first of all, 
Uh, I do, before I ask you that, I do want to say that we're going to be speaking with the guys from The Created very shortly, which is very exciting. But I hear that we have a very special guest lined up for next week's show. This is true. Do tell. So next week we have Massimo Bonzi from uh, Arduino, of course. So he is uh, going to be on talking with us, a part of our Hour of Code uh, extravaganza. extravaganza. So uh, we have our Arduino module that has been very popular within the Little Bits community, adding uh, programming and power to your circuits. So very exciting to have Massimo, friend of the show. Friend of the show. And we'll see if we can possibly figure out a way to get an Arduino starter kit to give away. No promises, but maybe we can work some magic. Excellent. So, but that's next week's show. I want to talk more about this week's show. Without further ado, I want to introduce Maddie and Mari from The Crated. Welcome. Welcome, hey. guys. Oh, hello. It's sort good to be of. Here. Feel like the opening act for the headlining band after you mentioned Massimo. We're really happy to be here. But that's next week. We're not here to talk about next week. We're here right. to talk about you guys. So I felt bad about not putting uh, all of the logic on an AT Tiny for the presentation, but now that I have an Arduino here, I feel like it's a pre wave for Massimo. So exactly. Yeah, absolutely. Foreshadowing. Exactly. It was all intentional. Absolutely. Good planning. Um, so, uh, first and foremost, uh, welcome to the show. Can you guys tell us, first of all, what the Crated is, who you guys are, and how this whole awesomeness came about? Of course. Uh, well, we like to say that we are a consulting agency that focuses on what we call enhanced apparel. Uh, the term wearable has been really oversaturated, and it applies to things that you wear on your body, but also the functionalities within these are quite limited to what people are expecting. So uh, enhanced apparel to us means that the ability for something and material to interact with the body or something hardware or even software based that actually enhances the human experience. So that's sort of what we focus on. Uh, and we, we do that through collaboration with larger companies and smaller companies alike. Um, yeah, and, and we're really interested uh, specifically in developing enabling technologies and working towards that. So having an opportunity to develop a module for the Little Bits Bit Lab has been really exciting for us because we feel like it's a piece that can enable the people to make the circuits that they want to and interact with them using their bodily movements just like enhanced apparel often does. Yes. So for you, the wearables is more than, uh, I guess, the fitness trackers and things like that that are really prominent and, and uh, consumer wearables, I guess, now. Yeah, exactly. we try and stay away from things that are specifically biometric, uh, which of course is very important in healthcare, but we think there's so much room in the space at the moment. I mean, even looking at some of the charts that Beecham Research have developed in terms of where wearables will be touching in the future, we can see that healthcare and fitness tracking is only a small portion of it. So we're excited to explore some of the more unexplored spaces when it comes to enhanced apparel. Right. For example, uh, we definitely value whimsy and the ability to interact with the body and allow for consumers to understand what that could mean. So we did uh, an artist residency at uh, the Visible Futures Lab at, the, at SVA a few months ago, I guess it's been a little while now, where we developed a tessellated grid textile that was soft and we uh, used piano wire and uh, nitinol, so uh, reactive nano metals uh, with a little bit of charge to be able to have it move in a way that it was kind of breathing and this was all uh, basically remote controlled through an interface. And that might not have immediate implications and applications in the world, but we like the idea of beginning to think in this way of integrating in a soft way and through textiles that really do uh, touch your body. So, yeah. That's Excellent. Cool. And so as far as uh, using little bits in your introduction to little bits, uh, you know, how have, do you see that kind of playing into wearables and have you kind of used them at all uh, in any of your prototyping so far? Yes, something that we find often is really challenging with the projects that we're working on is the conversational barrier 
where when you're trying to explain to someone, let's say, uh, Night Nong, Hence Garment, Controlled by Arduino, through a processing sketch on your computer interface, you, call, like, you, you lose a large part of the audience. And uh, we find that things like little bits that are very uh, visual and module and easy to understand are great for translating concepts before we build them when we're trying to translate from electronics to design, for example. So we, we love them as a translational tool. Definitely. And uh, the sort of joy that it evokes in people seems really great as an educational platform as well because in order to have people who will continue to create the ecosystem that we can con continue to do the work that we love, it requires the interest and we think that Little Bits does an amazing job at that. Yeah, mm -hmm. lowering that barrier and just, in, just in, in including more people. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's, that's great to hear. Yeah. Um, so without further ado, why don't we jump into a demo and uh, you can show us the module that you uh, both have been working on for the BitLab. And just a reminder, their module is currently up for vote. If you head on over to the BitLab at littlebits.cc slash BitLab, you can find theirs listed and please vote. Great. Well, thanks so much. So uh, as people who often focus on interacting with the body and sometimes using the body as a user interface, we thought it would be really cool to work on a tilt bit. So it has a simple digital output and uh, basically the way that you tilt it or ideally move your body, it will send a different, or it will trigger a different output, you know, corresponding with whatever direction you tilt it in. So pretty simple, you tilt this way, one output, tilt this way, another output, and then th there's another output on the other side as well. But um, and you can attach buzzers, you can attach motors. In the demo video that we have up in the BitLab, which is using motor motors, uh, we made a, almost a dance glove, so it has an eel wire attached, and depending on which way you move your hand, you know, it either lights up the eel wire or an RGB spectrum LED that's also attached. So there are some fun implications for getting little bits off of your table, into your hands, and interacting with the environment around you. Excellent. And so in terms of the, the axes, uh, how do they, uh, how does it, how do they uh, work? Which axes do they, does it work on? Uh, so it's, it's a four-way tilt sensor. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's one plane, mm -hmm. uh, but it, it works in two directions, I guess, so X, X and Y. Okay. As far as what we have noticed here. And so, let's see, is it, is it working on the camera as well? Yeah, 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 yeah. Perfect. There's always that moment where everything that can go wrong will go wrong, where I think that it's working here and it's actually exploding. <laughs> just, just have to make sure of these things. No, successful live demos are, 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 are <laughs> yeah. so no... Tricky. No, no simple feat. Absolutely. Well, we see, uh, it, it, obviously, it's not limited to something that was wearable. If you cloud-connected something like this, it could uh, indicate when something runs out. I, I mean, I think the cat food feeder is very obvious uh, for a lot of people if it's on uh, just the right axis. Uh, and as far as having it on something that was wearable, it seems like a lot of implications for the Burning Man set, too. Uh, mm -hmm. We've, we uh, actually went together, one of the first times we ever met was, was, at, Burning uh, was at Burning Man. Oh, that's very cool. And uh, so the, the number of battery packs that people have on themselves with EL wire and individual LEDs is pretty, it's pretty extensive, uh, so this would be a lightweight way of creating that into something that was interactive. Excellent. That's very cool. Combined with the uh, RGB LED yeah, strip you, module that Philip showed us a week or so ago. You've got yourself a very cool Burning Man ready project. There's a there's a, a future product set for us to, to roll out. We can talk about that later <laughs> on here. Um, uh, before we uh, b before we move on, obviously wearables is this. The way in which I think about it is that as Paul mentioned earlier, there's been a lot of move in sort of the the biometrics and the the health monitors, et cetera, et cetera. And obviously, you guys are taking a little bit of a different approach. Um, which, which I really like, I think is, is definitely a new and novel way to do it. Where do you guys see things a year from now? What would you like to see wearables? Oh, well, yes. um, maybe do we often say that the, the best technology should simulate magic in some ways, and so I, and you know, I also from, from an economist's point of view, we are all working to get to this point where we're post-scarcity and everyone can essentially play all day and do what makes them happy, and I, I feel like often wearables can help us abstract away our responsibilities so that we can both play all day and also experience a sense of magic. And you know, when I say things like that, it sounds a bit far off and a bit vague, but uh, for example, 
using a bit of silver in a garment as well as um, super hydrophobic coatings, you can make garments that don't need to wash, that don't need to be washed, meaning that if I don't have to wash my clothing, that's more room for play or more room for magic. And so in looking at that sense of whimsy, we hope that it will help people live better lives rather than give them information about how they might be somebody not equipped their current lives. I think the expectations should shift as well. Uh, right now, we seem to think that uh, we can miniaturize at a staggering rate and have a lot of functionality, um, gesture control embedded into our wearables that um, have NFC and Bluetooth and and disregard uh, the need for batteries. So uh, the hope would be that some of these products take a step back in, in what they're promising and we start looking at what the real needs are uh, and why, uh, a, a question we often ask ourselves is, why would my smartphone not do this? And if there's an answer there, then go for it. Awesome. Uh, well, once again, I want to thank both of you for taking the time and, uh, and joining us here in our awesome studio. Uh, Maddie and Mari from The Created, their module is currently up for vote at the BitLab. Please go vote. And thank you guys for coming. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right. To wrap things up for this edition of BitLab Live, uh, there was only one person who got the right answer, as far as I can remember, for last week's trivia question, which was, what was the song that Philip Verbeek's setup triggered with his RGB LED strip? And that was, of course, the newly famous, never-been-heard-before song, MC Hammer's You Can't Touch This. A kid that was out in the 80s, or 90s, excuse me. But I want to ask you all this week's trivia question, which, if you have been paying attention or you are watching this after the fact, there's still plenty of time and we'll be putting up a link right here in the YouTube video where you can go submit your answer directly in our forum. Today's trivia question is, who is next week's BitLab Live guest? That's an easy one. I know it's an easy one. If people are paying attention, it's an easy one. So, we are looking forward to your answers in the forum, which you can access at discuss.littlebits.cc and there is a newly created topic under the BitLab section that is the 12-2 trivia question. So with that, I want to thank you guys for joining us here every Tuesday for BitLab Live. We'll be back again next week. Thanks. At four? At Oh, that's actually a great question. We should be at four. We'll be following up if there's any time change. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everyone. Have a good week. Stay out of trouble.